Dear siblings in Christ, peace be with you. I recently shared that I would not seek a second term as your bishop. Since then, I've received a variety of responses, most of them appreciative. Thank you for that. Some were wondering if anything was wrong. Before I officially started in office, I was visiting the Reverend J. Longan of blessed memory in the hospital, and he asked me, Bishop, what are your personal goals for your time as bishop? I responded, I would like to end my service healthy, married, and still in love with the church. Over the past five plus years, I have frequently checked in on those goals for assurance and awareness. I'm happy to share with you that all three are intact, thanks to God. And I want to assure you, as I assured the Synod Council, when I shared my discernment and communicated in my letter that the reasons for not seeking a second term are positive for the sake of the Synod and my own sense of calling. Hopefully you noticed what I shared was my discernment and not my decision. There's an important distinction here for me. I spent much time in prayer and reflection, including an intentional retreat during which I asked the Holy Spirit what she wanted for me and for this beautiful synod. The answer I discerned is what I shared with you. I'm not discouraged or worn out. If I were, I would not likely return to the parish, but I would simply retire. I believe I and my staff have done good, faithful work, and we will continue to do so. I have discerned that new leadership at this time can have a greater impact on our mission forward purpose, and I'm already praying for us and for the next bishop of our synod, whoever that may be. Speaking of which, I also want to share with you the Synod Council's process for the upcoming bishop's election. For those of you who have been in this synod for the past five years, the process will look familiar as it is essentially the same process we used in preparing for the 2019 election. Here it is in brief. You can find more detailed information on our website. Starting soon, the Synod Council has directed us to conduct a synodical discernment process under the guidance of Rosella Hady White, a consultant well known to our Synod. In November, the Synod Council will appoint a Bishop's Election Committee to oversee the election process. The Synod Council shall call the Synod to prayerful deliberation. You can certainly begin now. We will again invite pre-identification of ministers of word and sacrament who this synod could consider as our next bishop. Our constitution requires an ecclesiastical ballot. That means that any ELCA rostered pastor can be named on the first ballot, regardless of whether that individual was pre-identified in the previously described process. Pre-identification of candidates, ministers of word and sacrament, may be made by conferences, congregations, and individuals. The pre-identification process will open on February 2nd. Each pre-identified minister of word and sacrament who gives permission to have their name considered will be given a form with common questions they should respond to and submit no later than March 4th. These questions will be generated as a result of the aforementioned discernment process. Responses submitted after March 4th will not be published. Names and responses will be shared with the Synod Secretary. The Secretary will post the names and responses of individuals on the Synod website 45 days before the assembly on March 18th. At the opening of the assembly, this information will be removed from the website and the assembly will move to an ecclesiastical ballot. Pre-identified ministers of word and sacrament are not to make the rounds of conferences and congregations to campaign for this office. I hope this gives you enough awareness of how we will proceed for now. Following the Synod Council meeting in November, we will share with you in a second video who is serving on the Bishop's Election Committee and next steps. If you haven't already, as I mentioned before, you can start praying now. For those who are discerning, for open minds and hearts, and for the work entrusted to us by Jesus Christ, may we continue to live like Christ in our communities.